Hey guys, welcome back to Ollie's Zoo. I apologise for the uh, rather long break that we've taken between now and the last video. Uh, we've been quite busy with um, shows and things like that, taking the animals out, meeting people, educating people on reptiles, that type of thing. Ollie's Zoo is going really well at the moment, so the videos have just kind of been put on the back burner a little bit, but we're back today and uh, I'm following through on one of the videos that I said I wanted to make in my last video, which was about tortoise housing. Uh, I'm going to be starting a new sort of like mini series um, on my channel uh, about reptile diseases. Um, and there's just so much to talk about. Uh, this is such a broad uh, subject. Um, and you know, I couldn't fit it all in a five ten minute video no chance so the first uh reptile disease video i'm going to look at lizards uh in particular peter dragons chameleons crested geckos and then just apply that to all those species in general and then uh, in another video i'll look at snake diseases tourist diseases uh how we might even do an amphibian diseases as well uh, but just for now we're going to stick with the lizards um, and uh, of course we're here with Dup and Caroline, she's wandering around somewhere uh, on the floor so I'll grab her in a second and um, when you think about uh, diseases, animal diseases, um, you've really got to know what you're looking for. Uh, in the case of mammalian species, birds, you know, uh, to a lesser extent uh, aquatic species like fish, you know, you've got some really obvious signs if an animal is in ill health, um, obviously with, mam with mammals, dogs, cats, uh, rabbits, guinea pigs, uh, small rodents like rats and, you know, hamsters. Uh, with your birds, you know, you've got your sort of like cockatiels, budgies, small finches and canaries, and then of course the large parrots like the African greys, the cockatoos, that type of thing. You've got some really obvious telltale signs if an animal is in ill health. Um, main one being uh, they're not going to be the usual loud chirpy responsive self with reptiles of course they're very sort of laid back creatures they don't really do a lot as we've covered in, uh, uh, in many videos in the past you know they just like to sit there really so it's quite hard to diagnose when a reptile is in ill health uh, you know so you've really got to know what you're looking for uh, now with bearded dragons of course um, as we've talked about in the past uh, probably one of the most neglected uh, reptiles out there um, in the UK you know that's due down to the fact that there's so many of them they fall into you know the wrong hands uh, and of course people don't some people don't realize the full sort of extent of what they're taking on and uh, by way of their own or not they end up neglecting them uh, one of the most common bearded dragon disease that you'll encounter in reptile keeping is uh, the dreaded metabolic bone disease or MBD as it's often abbreviated to. Now MBD is uh, a bone deficiency, metabolic bone disease and it mainly stems from uh, lack of uh, poor supplementation or uh, lack of UV lighting. Uh, obviously in a bearded dragon vivarium they need a strong UV output, a 10% or stronger UV bulb so that they're absorbing all those vitamin D3 particles into their body and it'll help their bones to grow and calcify so that they're just generally an overall healthy animal. Without that, their bones will become brittle, very weak, and of course they'll start to get various other deficiencies in their bodies. Uh, signs to look for with the MBD is that they'll start to get deformities along their spine, like, like really grotesque looking lumps. Their tails will start to sort of curve or bend like that. Their limbs will sort of like outstretch in the wrong way. Their limbs, their toes will start to curl. Uh, they won't be like the normal sort of like straight shape like bearded dragon toes should be and another obvious sign is that the bottom jaw starts to protrude out as well it starts to deform um now it, it's so easy to avoid is this disease do you know what i mean like like i say as long as you're providing them with the uv lighting and you're replacing that every six months like it should be you know you're not gonna uh, and of course you're supplementing their diet with the calcium supplements twice a week making sure they have a nice varied diet as well you know that's that's going to be an important contribution uh to preventing metabolic bone disease uh, you know as long as you're putting all these factors into play you're not really going to come across metabolic bone disease or hopefully anyway you know so that's that one another uh quite serious uh 
disease that you'll often find ails bearded dragons is impaction. Uh, this is more of a condition rather than a disease, but uh, it's usually when um, a lot of sort of like uh, debris uh, gets stuck in their gut, uh, and it often stems from incorrect substrates, uh, you know, so uh, or you know an unclean environment and they're eating the wrong things and it all getting stuck in the gut and uh, you know it can cause them a lot of pain uh, inside their gut and you know it constipates them that type of thing because uh, you know reptiles they don't digest things as quickly as we as us mammals do you know uh, a good way of preventing impaction is to make sure they're having regular baths you know so these guys they get bathed about twice a week you know uh, they get a good 10 minute soak in the water so that usually about covers it really um, to sort of like a first easy step of preventing impaction um, and as well make, making sure they have the right diet making sure they're being fed the right vegetable matter the iceberg lettuce you know that's a killer for impaction uh, you know cause bearded dragons they just can't digest it as well as some leaves uh, so it gets stuck in the gut it gets impacted causes them a lot of pain it's not good not good at all and then uh, just quickly another uh, bearded dragon disease that I want to look at is uh, fungal disease or uh, gout as the posh call it. Uh, this usually stems from sort of damp humid conditions in the tank, manifests itself around the limbs, around the toes and the arms and the legs, that type of thing, sometimes around the top of the tail and it's like a fungal infection that manifests itself uh, due to dirty or you know, damp substrate. Obviously bearded dragons coming from the desert, they need very dry, very arid tanks um, to live in, you know, and sort of uh, keep them nice and healthy. And of course a damp tank, you know, over time it is going to lead to something as serious as gout. So yeah, that's bearded dragon diseases. Okay, so we're going to look at uh, chameleons next and uh, don't ask me how I've done it, but I've managed to get Yoda out of his tank, uh, which I'm absolutely buzzing about. It's not often I hold this guy. Uh, I just sort of like, generally just like to leave him alone, really. Uh, please don't bite me, Yoda. Uh, I wanted to look at chameleons, really, just just because they have quite a unique disease that uh, does sort of plague their species um, compared to other lizards. You tend to find that... Um, a lot of the uh, other diseases I've mentioned, particularly metabolic bone disease, impaction again, uh, that affects uh, Yemen chameleons as well, uh, like it does be the dragons. But something that's kind of um, surfaced its ugly head in the last couple of years uh, in Yemen chameleons is cancer. And um, it's shame really, because uh, of course, you know, cancer is a horrible, horrible disease. Uh, from the mammalian species like ourselves, dogs, cats, that type of thing. Um, but in the last few years, uh, cancer sort of manifested itself onto chameleons as well. And, uh, you know, it, it it comes from uh, the fact that chameleons are prone to, like, sort of tumours and lumps and things like that around their eyes. Um, I don't know if you can kind of, like, see there. But, like, their eyes, of course, are very sort of bulbous. And uh, they are quite prone to getting um, tumours and things like that on those eyes. And uh, those lumps can be cancerous, unfortunately. Uh, so, yeah, I think with something like that... Sorry about that, guys. He just fell. I think with something as serious as cancer... It's important to know your animal inside out, you know, and detect something like that early on. If he's got a lump, get him to the vets, get it checked out, you know, and that could be the difference between your animal dying and being able to sort of prolong his life for as long as you can. So I'm not going to uh, carry this, I'm not going to uh, procrastinate much longer on the Yemen chameleon bit. Uh, get Grumpy Ash Yoda back in his vivarium. So there we go. So in the last part of our video, we're going to be looking at uh, crested geckos, or geckos as a whole. And uh, you may have noticed I've never actually featured this little guy in any of my videos before. Uh, but this is Malcolm, my uh, crested gecko. And uh, I've held back off on the crested gecko video, curry video, uh, for quite a while now. Uh, but, you know, I 
it is coming it's just in the pipeline uh but uh you know this guy's one of my favorite little lizards to work with here at ollie's zoo uh they're so placid and chilled out and just different really aggressive geckos you know um i really like them and uh you know he has some gorgeous markings on him you know i mean like when you look at his face that is the cutest little lizard face is that and you know, like I say, along his back as well, he has these really nice markings. Them, uh, if I can just get him to face you, them little spots there, right along his back, that's Dalmatian, is that? He's a Dalmatian crested gecko. He has different other morphs in him, but uh, you know, he suits this video very well because uh, the next condition that I wanted to talk about was prolapsing. And, you know, this can affect other lizards as well, but, you know, in particular, crested geckos and tropical species of lizards that are exposed to damp, humid conditions. Prolapse is where sort of like all the genitalia of an animal just sort of explodes and just deposits itself out, out of the animal. And the stress and the trauma and the pain of this ultimately results in their death, or it can do anyway. And... Uh, you know, like I say, in a damp, humid environment, which is where crested geckos live from, they come from the rainforests of New Caledonia. Uh, you know, if you're not maintaining that enclosure, if you're not keeping it clean, if, if you've not got a bioactive substrate, if, you, if your enclosure is live planted, eventually you're going to get algae growth in there, you know, and that type of thing. And, this, and the spores of that uh, bacteria will eventually manifest themselves onto your lizard, you know, and it can result in prolapse, you know, so... Uh, another condition that, uh, it's not really a condition as much as it is sometimes an inevitability with lizards, is when they uh, famously drop their tails, uh, you know, and this is again a natural thing that does occur with lizards, but in captivity I think it should be avoided where it can be, uh, you know, because they do need their tails for their balance and support and things like that when they're climbing, um, you know, and you know to an extent mating rituals, you know, their tails do play a part in that. You know, um, you know the the dropping of the tails is sort of like a natural uh, response um, that all animals have, the fight or flight response. Uh, you know, um, with a gecko or a different type of lizard, if they feel threatened, you know, uh, by a predator that they can't take down, they will drop their tails in order to get away. Uh, of course, in captivity, you know, like I say, I don't think I think that this should be avoided where it can. You know, so just generally. Uh, simple things like you know handling them the correct way handling them on their terms rather than on yours you know and not like just going in and grabbing them you know and keeping all of them tight you know if you just see how I'm, I'm holding him I'm just supporting his belly you know but he's the one who's in control do you know what I mean my hand is one giant climbing frame to him right now you know I'm not gripping him like a vice you know so uh, yeah so tail dropping uh, so yeah so this has been a bit of a different video, you know, but it's something that I've been meaning to cover for a while. I hope you've enjoyed it. I apologise again for the break in the videos, but there will be more coming soon. So keep a watch out for them. It'd be awesome if you could like this video, subscribe to it. If you're new to any of the reptiles that I've mentioned in this video, you know, you might want to give it a watch, you know, and watch out for the conditions that I've mentioned. So yeah, enjoy your day, guys. Bye.